let's have some fun. What would you like to talk about? I'm yours for an hour. Email. <laughs> yeah, email into the inbox. Yeah, I think that's. Well, um, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure everyone's aware of what you do, but do you want to give a little <laughs> feel about yeah, what you um, what you do? What do I do? Um, I mean, I turn emails into dollar signs. That's what I do. So um, it all starts with deliverability. That's the key thing that a lot of people come to us asking questions about, like a lot of technical questions, DNS records, and mm -hmm. you know, do I use LC email? Do you guys, you know, should I use my own Melgan account? Is it okay if I use SunGrid? All of the technical exactly. stuff. That's always the first thing that we have to tackle. Right. Um, but honestly, it's really only ten percent of the equation. And so, you know, let's say we get through that and we should get through that quickly. That's the easy, low hanging fruit stuff. But then it becomes this sort of it's a game. Right. Right. If you want your email marketing to actually produce revenue, then now we have to have a conversation about the behavioral side of email deliverability, which is really 90 percent of everything that we, you know, that's the, that's the juicy part. That's what we always work with our clients on. Cause we can do the technical stuff in a, in a day. Like that's not hard, right? but it doesn't serve a purpose. You can edit in high level. And that's where, you know, the Academy can teach you a little more about that and actually how to add your subject line. And, but what the content is, is going to totally affect everything you're doing and sending. Yeah, and behavior is even bigger than that, right? Because if you if you think about it, like, well, first of all, look at your own email account. How much do you love that, right? There's there's like a whole lot of crappy email in my email accounts, right. and I have I have a few of them. None of them are like, yay! I can't wait to wait to read all that. Every morning, I'm flipping through my phone, and I'm thinking like, oh, I just need to get through this. <laughs> so it's not it's I don't think it's a favorite activity for most people, just human beings in general. Um, and so, you know, honestly, I get up every morning excited to figure out how do we, how do we make sure that you're the message that people can't wait to engage with? That's what I'm after. I love that. Right. So like DNS records, I mean, fine, we'll, we'll deal with that because we have to, but that is so not the conversation that we need to be having. If we're going to turn your email into dollar signs, if it's actually going to produce revenue, which otherwise, what is the point? Right. Well, then we need to start thinking about how we're talking to people, who we're talking to, what is the psychology of all of that, exactly. um, you know, and that's where all the behavior comes in. So, um, yeah. and I remember in Costa Rica, <laughs> you were talking about the email list warm up and like how to send it. And I sat there right there and I did it and I sent it out and yeah. had people getting those responses, not yeah. because we like needed to boost our engagement necessarily, but it doesn't hurt. Well, and to prove a point, right? Like when I was in Costa Rica, we did a special session. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of that special session was to to get people in a room. I think we were in there for like three and a half hours. It, it was that time. We could it have went so fast. It's more than what we can cover on today's call. But, um, you know, we, we went through a bunch of stuff. I just kind of like helped everybody understand the basics around email deliverability and strategy. And then I challenged everybody and said, okay, now do it not like just do it in general, but like, let's just, I'm going to give you something to do and go do it. Cause I, cause yeah. people are afraid sometimes to uh, hit the go button on stuff like that. They're not really sure what they should do or how they should do it. Or, uh, yeah, you know, they stare matter. at the blank screen. <laughs> we call it like the, the blue screen of death, right? It's the white screen of death. Like you're looking at that word document and you're like, what should I write? I don't Your know. Your brain just looks like the loading yeah, yeah yeah and a lot of people are really um you know they're kind of like that's a big obstacle for people to send to do email marketing in general is because they feel like a i'm not a techie b i'm not a copywriter exactly yeah. right so i'm out <laughs> and um and guess what i'm neither and so i'm here i'm living proof like you don't have to be a techie or a copywriter to do yeah. good email we we have a client that um, i've been working with for over a year um probably about a year and a quarter at this point and when I first started working for them, it was February of last year, the whole first month was cleaning up stuff. And it wasn't just technical, the technical stuff we were able to do within a couple of days, they were using SendGrid with high level and it was a mess. Um, and so we cleaned up all the technical stuff pretty quickly, but then the rest of the month was dedicated to really just cleaning up their data. 
right? There was just a lot of, there was just like tag conventions and custom fields and just, you know, you, any one of us, you could go into our high level account and there's always going to be some level of like, everybody has a junk drawer, right? Yeah. Okay. And so we had yeah. to kind of, yeah. So we, we had to kind of go through all of that. And then the second month I sent out um, an email, it was two emails to uh, 1,333 people. They had like an 18,000 person list at the point at that time, but I was just, I was doing some testing. I needed to understand who I should be when I show up at the door, you know, how should I be talking to people that, cause they have a voice. It wasn't my voice. Right. Um, so I sent out 1,333 emails and it was two emails to each person um, over the course of, I think about nine days, I'd have to go look. Um, and all I was trying to do was figure out some basic stuff, right? But we made 98,500 off of that email. And so the company was like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> you just paid for yeah. your whole contract. So yeah. you can do whatever you want. That <laughs> was the second month, right? The third month, it gets worse. The, that That's pretty cool. Like if I could walk away and just tell you that story and we'd, we'd all be like high-fiving each other, that's awesome. Yeah, but the worse. third month, they wanted me to send out an email to their whole list. And it was a survey. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you know, like I'm melting, like follow the yellow brick road. This is not going to be good because I had just cleaned everything up and just gotten into a place where we had a nice high domain reputation and people were responding and things were going well. And then they wanted me to do this thing that's really not best practice. And so I, um, I basically made a deal with the devil and I explained to them what I thought was going to happen if we did this and, and where I felt like we could do it and, you know, how we should do it. And I went on down the path and I started doing it because they wanted they wanted this email to go out. They needed the data for the survey. And long story short, about three quarters of the way into it, we had to cut it. It was that bad. Uh, it yeah. took our nice high domain reputation and went near, near, like it just drove it into the ground. OK, within like a couple of days. Um, and so I shut it down and then, you know, it took me a couple of weeks to, get, to build that back up. But long story short, like that was a calculated risk. There's nothing wrong with doing something like that as long as you understand what the potential mm -hmm. ramifications are and how you're going to handle it. Right. And so we had a plan in place. And then when we did it, we executed on the plan. Right. Um, but in December, so I started with them in February in December, I ran a, a campaign to about 6,500 of their people. So what I want you guys to hear out of this, by the way, is these are not big numbers. Like everybody okay. always thinks we have to have these huge lists to make any money off of it. Like, oh, I have, you know, 50,000 contacts on the list. That's awesome. Um, they're probably not doing you any justice, most of them, right? And so um, I work with companies to say like, let's, let's hone this in and really get the right message to the right person at the right time, at the right phase of awareness and under the right conditions. Yeah, because again, I wanna make sure that this is the message that they can't wait to engage with. Not the one that they're like, oh, you know, scrolling through the, right. the notifications on your phone. And so we've been able to accomplish that over the last several months of, you know, um, working on this with their with their list. And so in December, when we ran a campaign, it was very targeted. It went to just under 6,500 people. It was three emails and it was in 18 days. And we made a million point zero two six off of that one. Wow. So we... I, you know, now they, I just literally just got off a call with them and they said, Hey, I want to send this email. We kind of talked about who the audience was and all of the stuff around the email and what was it they were trying to get out of it. And long story short, he's like, when can you do that? And I said, I can do that on Monday because everything is dialed in. And so I know yeah. exactly how to do what needs to be done when they bring up some idea. That's amazing. And that's why we wanted you here <laughs> so that you can yeah. help us and teach others. Cause we've, <laughs> um, you know, Melissa and I as cultivating sales have always been a huge client and raving fan of yours. As well. <laughs> oh, and, we're a client yeah. and a, a raving fan. We were not a huge yeah. client, but <laughs> 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 sorry, I said that weird. <laughs> um, you get what She's I mean. Like, You're uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm I'm really excited to have others in our audience learn from you. We saw how it worked. I mean, yeah. when we first hired you, Kristen, um, well, we were clueless and <laughs> less than educated us. And now, you know, we're getting those really great open rates and click through rates. Yeah, no and, um, 
and our clients are getting them also because we're training them with what you, well, first we've got it all set up for them the way you've taught us to, and then we're training them what you've trained us. And so it works. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not rocket science, but just like anything, like I'm the nerd in this and I get that not everybody's the nerd, right? If you ask me to run Facebook ads for you, I am definitely not the right person for that job. Okay. And again, I don't think that's rocket science either, but it's just, it's not my, you know, zone of genius. So I'm going to be the email nerd for people. You know what I remember about that though, Melissa, is when we first started working together is you already had, I think like a hundred accounts or something at that point. Um, You were just a baby. We got picked up mail gun and we had to move everybody over to send in blue. And that's right. Jeff joined me because then I, and then we got, I sure as hell learned what DNS records were. Yeah, Yeah. you did. But what was funny is back on mail gun, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, But we were, uh, you know, I mean, let's just put it bluntly. I was rocking your world a little bit with like, we, we needed to make some changes and you were very trusting. You went down the faith bus, which was awesome, but your clients had to, they came kicking and screaming in some cases, remember? Mm -hmm. So I remember you were on a call with them. I wasn't on the call, but you told me about it. And you said that they thanked you for making them make these changes because it had made such a big difference. And I was like, yes, that's what we're after. We just did a workshop um, with our clients again and talked about what to do and what not to do. And uh, it was highly, highly attended because they don't know. It, I I was a newbie when I started working with you. Well, they're newbies to yeah. email mm-hmm. and and all what the reality of what real right. email sending yeah. is versus yeah. just. Waiting. But now we're the experts. <laughs> Right. So but, do we have an audience of people that have questions? Do you, or do you have I, questions? I have me? like quite a few. Not, you're not shy. I know you're not shy. You got any questions? I, oh, I do have okay. uh, questions prepared. So I will run through those. And then if you guys have any other ones, throw them in the chat. And, uh, or if they come up as I'll we watch those. Yeah. 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 Let's make um, the hour as useful as possible. Number one. What are your best practices for when a new sub account just gets started and wants to send an email blast to 5,000 people? Oh What's, boy. What, what would oh you boy. give There's so, there That is a pat. You came packing, didn't you? Because that answer is uh, different depending on what your he setup He couldn't is, be right? here physically, but trust me, he's here spiritually. <laughs> so um, what I do might be different than what I would advise you to do somebody else to do because my strategy might be different than how you're set up. Right. So um, let's just put it this way. I work with, um, you know, hundreds of clients. I've talked with thousands of people in the high level community, and this comes up all the time. It's going to partly depend on, are you SAS Mm -hmm. or or services? Are you um, bringing everybody in on a shared subdomain strategy of some sort, or are you making sure they have their own branded you know, subdomain or, you know, God forbid they're having their own mailgun account. Like mm-hmm. there's so many different ways that we could do this. So what we have to think about, and one of my clients is the largest SaaS provider um, for high level. And uh, what we do with that account is we have a domain that everybody comes in on. So a shared subdomain, you know, like Um, That's the agency setting. So every new account obviously gets that domain. And then um, they have an option for people to do like an optimized deliverability package. So there's an upsell there opportunity for you, right? Why not? Because I mean, think about it. If they join with Active Campaign or Infusionsoft or even MailChimp or whatever, Constant Contact, it's not like they give you these options. You're just kind of stuck with their shared subdomain strategy. Like that's what it's gonna be. Too bad, so sad. So the beauty of using high level is that you can get out of that rat race And by the way, like I always say, when average people do average things, they can expect to get average results. And so those of us who are using high level, we have a much different opportunity because we now have the ability to choose to use Mailgun, for instance, and set up our own, you know, domains on the back end, our own IPs and things like that. And not everybody wants to go to that level, but the people that do, huge opportunity. Yeah, we do. 
Right. And so like with my clients, we all have one mail gun account. Like I have one mail gun account for my clients and any clients that I'm, that are agencies like yourself. Which is also you know, what we do, of course. Right. You have your own mail gun account. So you are the SMTP provider basically for right. all of your sub accounts. And then, um, you know, we usually, if it's, if there's a level of SAS to it, then we don't want to get everybody, no, they're not all going to get their own domains, SAS, you know, that's, that's not going to happen unless they pay for the privilege. Well then, okay, we'll have that conversation. Um, but if it's a client I'm personally doing email marketing for, then, oh boy, howdy, they're going to have their own branded subdomain. And I should say subdomains, because I usually do, uh, at least two, right. sometimes three. Um, if somebody wants to come in and send 5,000 emails, the question isn't really can I, it's it's should I, right? Because you can, you totally can. You can upload your list of uh, yeah, you know, 100,000 if whatever. you want to and just friggin' go for it. But that's not probably a good idea. And it's not a good idea for you, like as the person doing the sending, oh, because yeah, you're just no. not going to get fantastic results, right? But let's say that they had a list of 5,000 and they're starting and they're like, okay, I need to send this email out. If they're on your shared subdomain and your shared subdomain already has the you know the the history on it the ability to the volume and consistency to be able to handle that awesome right like not that big of a deal although i want to make sure that they had a nice clean list because i don't want their crap coming in and mucking up my subdomains right so we always um especially right now i don't know if you guys have noticed this but there's a lot of like uh there's a lot of bad actors out there that are grabbing high level accounts. I know, you know, faster than we can shut them down and they're sending stuff out. One of our clients had a, um, somebody sending out stuff, pretending like they were a couple of different banks, Ooh. um, pretending like they were Microsoft Ooh. and, um, they oh. ended up with like a high, uh, balance or complaint rate. I don't remember what it was. And so we dove into it for the client cause they're like, Hey, you know, what's going on here? we're like well i'm pretty sure this isn't us bank i'm just gonna and that link is nefarious at best like it was bad and so we had to shut them down but this kind of stuff is happening more routinely now we have another client who this happened to twice in one week where somebody grabbed an account they had it all set up automated the account gets created they get access to it they upload their list bada bing bada bang like the whole thing's going to go out lickety split as quick as possible and then you end up with like a hundred thousand emails went out and, and half of them bounced. Yeah. Right? That just, mm. right. So like, what are the opportunities here to kind of like shut that down for me personally? What I do is I onboard everybody. Now I realize that's not a solution for every SaaS provider because some SaaS providers have people coming in at a much higher rate. I don't SaaS is not like my primary business objective. Yeah. Right. So um, when people come in for me, we do, we do an onboarding. So nobody gets admin access to their account until we say so, which I means they can't import a list. Oh, so that's, oh, that's interesting. There's no, there's no, you can't add, you can't import a list. You don't have import export capabilities if you're not an admin user. So mm. we just make them a user user. What if that's the right yeah, terminology? User, 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 which hopefully they're not a user, but anyway. Um, yeah. So that's one of the ways that we kind of lock that down and, um, you know, okay. just keep that from happening. But you know, when the good actors, when, when normal people show up at the door and they want to send out 5,000 emails, then just as part of our onboarding experience, we just make sure that they know, um, you know, that we've talked to them a little bit about best practices. Right. And right. making sure that they, number like one, have a clean them list. out, especially yeah. with bulk actions, you can drip them and right. right. Like you said. And depending on whose domain it is, there may be some other discussion that needs to happen because you definitely don't want to send out 5,000 on a brand new domain. That would be a bad idea. Right. In um, fact, we had, we had a client that did that um, last week on accident. We were warming up their domain and on, uh, on, on the day they were supposed to send about 200 emails, they accidentally sent 4,900 emails. Ooh. And yeah, it wasn't good. They had, they had like a teens open rate on it. I think it was like 17 or 19% open rate on the email that accidentally went out on that domain. And, um, they had a nice high reputation yeah. when that happened. Right. But then two days later is when you saw it fall. Cause I told him, I said, we got to give this two to four days right. and we're going to see yeah. if it affected anything. And it did, unfortunately, and it did affect yeah. the domain reputation, but it happens. And so now we're circling back. Your way back up. 
That's yeah. right. We'll bring it and back. you, uh, you kind of hit my second question, which is like allow it, your thoughts on allowing an agency to sh use a shared email domain or using a new sub account or new domain for every sub account you set up. Yeah, and again, that strategy. So if it's if it's SaaS, it does not make sense to give everybody their own domain. That is, yeah. just, I mean, trying to get every stinking person to understand what it takes to warm up a, a brand new subdomain is like a nightmare is right. in the making. And, um, and, and if you think about it, like a shared subdomain strategy is a normal strategy across pretty much any email marketing software you're going to find. Yeah. Um, Infusionsoft, they're going to send out from some derivative of infusionmail.com. Um, active campaign, they're all going to be like EMSD send, you know, six and some subdomain structure off of that. Um, you know, MailChimp, like all of them have a shared subdomain strategy on the back end, and they don't offer you the opportunity to have your own domain. Very so again, high levels different and difference not bad, different affords us an opportunity. If you want to go with a shared subdomain strategy, then just do a you know a couple of them i would say don't put your all eggs your in one basket yeah. right but have a shared subdomain bring everybody in on it keep monitoring that move your bad actors off limit their sending do whatever you have to do um the good actors i would have a secondary subdomain that's also shared but it's like an a grade b grade kind of a thing right right, right. So what we kind of like land in? yeah so yeah. for those clients, we bring everybody in on the same shared subdomain, and then that's considered our B grade. It's not bad. It's better than fricking most email providers, right? But then okay. the ones that are really going to prove themselves, they get shunted over to the A grade subdomain. Your VIP. So, mm -hmm. But when they're switching, aren't they having to? No, because that reputation is already established. Right. right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Another one is how does an agency ensure that their sub account clients email campaigns land in the inbox and kind of with that best practices of staying out of spam? Sure. Okay. That's a, <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and how I, do we bring and I'll go down that road. I will absolutely yeah. go down that road. Are there any more, are there any other questions that we need to be aware of, or should I just kind of like go down that road with everybody? Uh, I want to go one question first that would be as simple yeah. as along the lines that we were just talking about. You mentioned earlier that when you do give them their own domain, sometimes you give two or three different options. How do you use those different domains? Yeah. If so you give, give them three yeah. or two even do you use those don't you have to warm both those up yeah all that yep. stuff. yes all that stuff so yeah. um i don't like to put all my eggs in one basket i like to diversify okay because you just never know what's going to happen and if some dude comes in and ruins something i don't want it to be like oh no the sky is falling so yeah. <clears throat> we always start off with two subdomains minimum inside of the mailgun account for you know like if we're, we're gonna do like a reply dot and a replies dot maybe mm -hmm. But we also ah. do like a reply to like reply and then the number two or reply right. to dot so like sometimes we'll have four it just depends on what kind of volume we're expecting what kind of traffic um so there's always one that's going to be connected to the agency level and that's the one that everybody gets obviously when the account is created because that's just how high level works and we don't set up any funky any other tools to like make different subdomains for people or anything like that we just right. let them all get you know that um, and then, uh, but we warm up more than one subdomain and then every once in a while we might switch over to the secondary one, like if we're not using it, but we need to put some use on it, we might just switch over to that, send out some stuff, yeah. <laughs> excuse me, like, um, you know, once a week or once every week and a half, something like that. Right. Just to keep some traffic on it, but it, maybe it's just a domain that we're keeping in the background. It's mm -hmm. just available if we need to. Because what we what we don't want to do is get to a place where we've got a bunch of people all depending on something, and then it drops the bottom drops out of it, and now oh, what do we, we do? Get it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we've got to have like a secondary one in the background that we have some action well, on once in a while me. that's going to be worthy of switching people over to. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, I'll just, we'll skip those bigger ones and come back to them. Um, and then are there any particular keywords that you, you know, are the biggest no-no words that will land you in spam, like that off the top of your head? Because I know like free, click here. Yeah, yeah all that stuff. Yeah. So if you, I mean, <laughs> put your head in the space of a marketer. Yeah. 
write an email the way a marketer typically writes and you're going to notice some things, <laughs> right? You're going to notice like the get, the get and the nows and the freeze oh. and the here's and the clicks and all the stuff, right? Like right. click here. Too many emojis. Now. What? Yeah. Well, I mean, emojis are kind of weird. Um, they're not always a problem. And just think about it. Like every emoji has a unique identifier behind it and they're made new ones are being made every day. So just right. imagine trying to be Google and keep up on all the different dollar sign emojis or whatever. So, yeah. um, you know, that's kind of an interesting little game to play, but the, yeah, all of those typical marketing words, we try to, um, stay away from as much as yeah. possible. There's lots of, and by the way, I don't want to be like every other marketer. Like that's the whole point. I want to be the message they can't wait to read. So I'm not right. going to talk to them like every other marketer talks to them. The last thing I want is a swipe file. The last thing I want is a swipe file, mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't want to go buy someone's set of emails for something because yeah. those emails have been used and abused. They're out there already. And, you know, once the providers and there's blacklists that do this too, but once they pick up on certain language um, in an email and the fact that it's been marked as spam, um, right. you know, all across the land, well, then when you go to send it, they see you coming a mile away. They're like, like, oh yeah, that yeah. content is something we've already plagiarized. seen. Yeah. Well, like those plagiarism. <laughs> they just know that that content has already had maybe negative right. uh, engagement elsewhere. And so when yours shows up, you don't know that, but they do. Right. And so, you know, you're going to be counted in that bucket. So I don't do those kinds of things, but um, I have software that, uh, you know, we use. So like, um, yeah. <laughs> as, yeah, I know you, you guys have it, but when I was, uh, when I was new at this myself and I'm like, oh my God, trying to remember all the words that I shouldn't be using and stuff, it's just really hard. Right. Um, and so I, you know, we have software now that does all of that, which is available if people are interested in, but basically we put in the subject line. I write all my emails in my software. Mm -hmm. um, I put the subject line in, I put the copy in, I hit the, the assess button. And then it tells me like, Hey, here's some things you might want to think about now. Is yeah. any of it definitive, like black and white? No, yeah. I write emails. We have a couple of clients. We do email marketing for, right. um, most of our clients we coach, right. But I have a couple that I do email marketing for, cause of course, I mean, nobody should trust me if I don't freaking actually walk the walk. Right? right. So, um, but when I write emails for them, one of the things that they offer is ad buying mm. and the word ad is a spam trigger word. Um, and take this in context, right? I'm not saying like there's one word, like the word ad, oh my God, you're going to spam. Right. That's not what I'm saying, but that combined with several other things and they don't tell us how their algorithms work. So we're just kind of best guess, right? But it's kind of like, if you too. have, yeah, if you have too many check marks on that list of like, oh, that's happening, that's happening. She's using this word and that word. Well then, yeah, you're more likely to, to go to spam. So when I write those emails and I have to talk about ad buying, I just say ad buying. Yeah. I just clean up everything else around it, right? That makes um, sense. Your, your yeah. grader reminds me of Grammarly, but for emails specifically. <laughs> yeah, it's and like, I'm not editing your English. What's yeah. funny is that company, the director of sales was like an English major and his mom like drilled it into him. So when I write an email, like I just wrote an email and it said um, three words. And then after that, it was two words. Like, you know, what oh. what is this? It's three words, dun, dun, right? And it wasn't, it was two words. And um, so this is the kind of thing that like he right. picks up on is you said it was three words, but you only put two words. Right. I understand that. Like calm logistics. down. Yes. It's okay that I used a question mark instead of a period. Yeah. It's okay that I got those two letters backwards in that word and it's misspelled, right? Mm -hmm. I don't do that necessarily on purpose, but if I misspell a word in the email, I do not go back and fix it because it's a pattern interrupt and it makes you, yeah. I'm, I'm like, um, how many times did you read that sentence before Thank you, you for giving decided me you had to tell me about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for giving me an excuse to uh, defend all of my typos. <laughs> I just think it's so funny. And we, we, I mean, I've been working with them for over a year, so we just kind of laugh about it now. He's like, you really, you need to fix the punctuation in this. I'm like, no, no, I don't. Let's see. Let's just see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Sweet. And then the drip mode that we were talking about a little bit earlier what's like the best average 
I know it depends on how much, how many emails you're sending and how to how many people, but is there like an average good drip ratio that you would recommend? So, I mean, yes, we have certain numbers that we use and I'll tell you what those are, but again, take all of this in the context of there's no black and white with email. Like if I say do X number every so often, that doesn't mean that you can't change that up. Right. We have formula per se. Right. But when I'm getting going with somebody, I'm not going to just blast something Mm -hmm. out. Even if it's only to a few hundred people, I'm not going to blast it out because I'm knocking on the door of Google and Yahoo and Outlook. And I'm, I'm saying, let me in. You know, so like, I want to show up well, I don't want to show up. I always tell people like I have daughters and a son, my son's 12. So we'll leave him out of this right now. But I have three daughters and my youngest daughter is 18. And if someone shows up at the door to pick her up for a date, you darn well bet that like her dad and I, my husband and I, we are checking this boy out. We, we've probably looked him up on social media. Yeah. But we're definitely looking out the front going like, what's he driving? How's he driving? How did he park? Where did he park? Who's he with? If he How's came he walking, up to the door talking, at all, dress, or did he smelling, just text her yeah. and say, Hey, come out here. Right. We're checking all this stuff out because as he's approaching, we're making a judgment call. We're giving him a reputation, so to speak. Right. And how high he is on that reputation meter is going to be whatever, but like he needs to show up well. So did he show up like with a a bunch of gang members looking like he just rolled out of a ditch? Uh, Isabella upstairs, right? (laughs) We'll handle this. Or did he show up in a suit and tie with flowers for mama? Yeah. That's a different reputation, right? And so we're going to- That's a whole different way though. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right? And so then, then let's say he takes our daughter. So like now we're going to decide, are we letting him on the property? Mm -hmm. Are we letting him in the door? Are we ushering him into the best room in the house? Right. Right. Offering him a lovely beverage, like whatever is happening. Um, Mm -hmm. And so then, then our daughter is going to go out with him, presumably. Right. And she's going to come back and hopefully she's going to have a report for us. We're not just going to have to be like wondering how things went. And that could be good, bad, or ugly, right? And so whatever reputation he might have had at the beginning may change after she interacts with him, right? So if you think about this in the context of email, I hope I hope this makes sense to everybody who maybe doesn't have kids, but if you think about this in the context of email, right? Uh, Google, Yahoo, Outlook, they're the parent. Yeah. And the recipient of your email is basically like the daughter in this scenario. So that would make us the suitor. We, we're the dude showing up at the door. It's kind of weird because we're you know, our girls. But Boom anyway. box on the shoulders. Right, oh, right. And so we want to show up well, too. So when we're sending email on a new asset, like a brand new um, subdomain or a brand new um, IP address, or we're sending it to... Um, you know, people that don't really know us that well, like we have to be thinking about this because we need to show up with the suit and tie and flowers for mama. Right. Yeah. Right. And then we need to make sure that the recipient of the email, the the 18 year old daughter is actually wanting to engage with the email because even if mom and dad are like, yeah, this is a go, we're going to bring him into the living room that in my house, in my house, that was like the best room in the house. I wasn't even allowed in the living room when I was growing up unless <laughs> I was cleaning it. Uh, only that was reserved for like the best people. Right. Yeah. And, um, but then the daughter is going to engage. And so how she engages with that email or how all of the various recipients across the land are engaging with that email from that domain or from that IP mm-hmm. is going to start to weigh in on the reputation. Right. So pretty soon the parents reputation is going to start to adjust. Right. So you could send out a hundred emails the yeah. same email to like a hundred people, that doesn't mean they're all going to land in the same folder for every hundred, every of those hundred people. Like they're going to land in different places because part of that honestly depends on what that email provider, like Yahoo, for instance, has seen um, from that domain and kind of like how people are responding or what they've seen in terms of like that kind of language or that copy or those links, all the stuff that we're doing inside of our email. And then also what weighs in on that decision completely out of our hands is how that individual person has historically used their email account. Right. 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 So I know this is going to be a shock to people, but like there are times where I send out email and every once in a while it's going to land in promotions or it's going to land in the spam folder. And that is okay. There's no such thing as a hundred percent to the inbox. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I'm just trying to make sure that my, I don't wake up in the morning to be average. You guys know me, you've known me for a long time. I don't get up going, man, I can't wait to be average. I want to be like well above average. I want to like exceed average so big that like, it's (laughs) shocking. Okay. I'm very competitive. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm sending emails, whether it's to a few hundred people or a few thousand people or tens of thousands of people, I want my open rates to be ridiculously high, Mm -hmm. you know, 16 to 26% being average. I'm not interested in that. I'm not even interested in thirties. I'm not even happy in the forties. I'll be honest with you. Like for my companies, when we're sending email out, I want to look, I'm 55 is like the lowest I'm going to be happy with anything under that. I am like, "Mm, what's going on here. Right. Right? It doesn't matter how many people I'm sending to. I'm always going to be looking for high fifties, sixties, seventies, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Your analogy reminded me one of one of the ones that I always use with our clients where if you have your actual connected domain is replies.thegHLacademy.com, but your from email address in the emails that you're sending in your workflows and your bulk actions and things like that says Stephanie at yahoo.com. And people yeah. are like, why isn't it going through? And I'm like, well, think of it as like the bouncer at the club. If you walk yeah. up there, with your ID and your face doesn't look like your face on your ID <laughs> saying get out. Right. But if it does, you can go in. Yeah. Right? And when you send from a free email address yeah. on the front yeah. end, like a yahoo.com or outlook.com or something like that, gmail.com. And then on the back end, you're connected with a legitimate SMTP provider. You look like a spoofer. Very much. I so. mean, you, you just, you just basically look like, hmm, that ain't right when you show up at the door and a lot of the uh email service providers um actually have settings i won't go into all the technical stuff but they have settings that basically say no Mm -hmm. and so some of that email is just not going to get yeah yeah Yeah, um can i just jump in with one um we haven't talked about this before because this is all all brand new but with chat gtp that was my next question (laughs) I was going to say with your copy grader and all of that crap all coming out now, not your, not that yours is crap. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did she just call my copy grader crap? Yes. <laughs> no, that's cool. Don't worry. I'll but, yell at her later. Um, <laughs> and like, what are your thoughts on like people writing and using AI to write their emails and should they still look through them and re? Oh my goodness gracious. Um, I yeah. get this question a lot lately. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. So um, here, here's the thing. Like, I would never. It's so funny when you use Chat BT, bleh, Chat GPT enough, you're going to start to notice there's certain ways that it does things, and um, you can almost you can almost smell it now when it's coming. Like, I saw a well-known marketer post something on Facebook a couple of weeks ago and it was so not his normal style and as i read it i was like that's freaking chat gpt you can just you can just see it just oozes it right it's nasty um plus i mean if you if you write if you prompt it you're going to get back some really interesting information if you know anything about your topic and then you prompt it trying to get it to write stuff for you you're going to even look at it with one ear up like a dog like mm. That's not quite right. Um, So you do have to go through it. But um, I am never a fan of letting some other tool write an email for me. I am a fan of using a tool for what a tool is meant to do, which is to to prompt me, to give me ideas, to give me things to think about, right? To give me new ways to to, um, talk to people. So um, I have ChatGPT open on my screen all the time. And I go in there and I ask it things because I want it to make me think. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But I never copy what's in there and just stuff it into an email for, I mean, can you? Absolutely. Should you? I guess that's a question for you to ask, but it just right. doesn't make sense to me why we would do, right. we would do that. It's not going to hit the mark. My favorite use of is, is such writing. a personal thing. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, Steph. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing, use for it is like, I will write the structure, the skeleton of an email or a social media post with my words and my cadence and stuff. And I'll throw it in chat GPT and be like, enhance it, just make it 
yeah. sound better than yeah what give me some ideas yeah. like I like to use it as a buffet and I've done this with clients even on coaching calls where we've pulled up chat GPT and we've put stuff in it so that I can help them think through what are some other vantage points that we can come at this from like what what are some other ways that we can get creative about doing this and then we take all of that and then we write an email right so um I mean, that's just my perspective. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who are like, oh, I love chat GPT and I write emails with it all the time and it works great. Awesome. Keep, you know, do, do what works for you. For me personally, I just, I can't do that. I would, I would lose my mind if I just had some you know, AI spit out emails for me and I just sent those off as though I, because you know what, I'm going to lose touch. And I'm really, well, really garbage picky. In, garbage out. If you, if you, yeah. if the prompt is crappy, the That's email true. is going to be crappy. <laughs> That's true. Right. Yeah. But and it can give you ideas. Context. It yeah. can give you ideas different ways. Like I'll, I'll start a sentence and then I'll say, finish this sentence in 10 different ways and within this context. And here's the, here's the yeah. ITA that I'm talking to. And here's the call to action and stuff. And I'll just say, finish the sentence 10 different ways. And then I'll say like, make it, if you say, make it funny, it does one thing, but if you say, make it LOL funny, it does something entirely different, which is always fun for me. Um, Cause one of the companies I write for is known for their humor. Oh. And my husband for years has always said that I have what's called Kristen humor, meaning I'm not that funny. So mm -hmm. this is always on so you're mind. Blair funny that, that was <laughs> so yeah, anyway I yeah so I, I use it for ideas actually I am pretty funny and um I just didn't know it because I never had the opportunity to actually like explore it but now um I've come into my own so oh, yeah. anyway yeah I so what else what other questions Josh, you guys have I think has a quick Josh question. you got any hey, questions Josh. Uh, hello everyone are you the only uh, one on here with us <laughs> like where is is everybody else Tom, on we're gonna post it on YouTube and stuff I bet okay you. Yeah. Josh, what's up? Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I live out in Las Vegas, and I would say that as a general rule, whether it's chat GPT or plastic surgery, enhancing what you already have is always better than it appearing completely fake. There you go. You know? <laughs> yeah. And that's when people are just like, it's just not, just doesn't yeah. feel right, you know? It's an easy, so, uh, but again, it average just people. It feel right. I always, yeah. it's, it's the same thing though, you guys, it's average people who do average things. You're going to get average results. Like I'm not interested mm -hmm. in being average. So I'm never going to be like just having some other tool, write My email for me. I'm just yeah. going to use it yeah. as a tool. Yeah. And I was going to, uh, no, I was going to share I'll a story when you <laughs> go, go ahead, Josh. <laughs> I'm shutting up. No, it's Josh's <laughs> turn. Josh, take your hand off your mouth. Let's go. <laughs> I was going to say, I was at a conference one time and I was amazed when you said the right message to the right person at the right time. They showed a, the gentleman on stage worked, he was like an Infusionsoft consultant and worked with a guy that sent out two emails a day to a very large list and had an over an 87% open rate. That sounds insane, right? Like, but it was this guy that sent these uh, tips for uh, how to pick up women at a bar and for that audience, they were like hyper engaged and would open every single email and read it. But, you know, like for them, it, it seems like it would be impossible to get 85, 80 yeah. percent open rate sending twice a day every day. But for that market, it was amazing. Right. Anyway, the message to audience match is huge. And again, like if you want to. So here's when we work with clients, right, we help them understand 10 percent of this game is technical. So yes, we're going to go through all your DNS mm. research and your domain strategy and help you figure out how the tools should be set up and all the stuff, right? But we want to get through all that. We want to get you to the inbox in the first two to seven days because that's actually the easy part. Now, the next step is what does it take to keep you in the inbox consistently? Like how yeah. do we stay there? And that's going to move into behavior. Now we're talking about volume and consistency. We're talking about engagement. How well are people picking up what you're putting down? You know, good, bad, mm -hmm. or Right. And we're right. talking about all the little marketing. That's my term now, all the little marketing things that we do, like on the inside and the outside of the email, what are all the things that we're doing or not doing best practice wise that can get us into trouble. Right. And so once we move through that, though, then the third step is to turn it into dollar signs. If our email marketing is getting to the inbox and we're getting nice high open rates and, and all that kind of stuff, that's awesome. That looks good on paper. And all our friends will fall out of their chair when they see how amazing our numbers are, right? But what really matters is, is it actually producing revenue. 
Right. And so that's mm -hmm. where we start to go through this message to audience match process with our clients, because we want them to understand that it's not enough to get in front of people if it doesn't convert. How do we talk to people? And mm -hmm. so like I have a golf ball that I keep on my desk. I don't play golf, so nobody quiz me on this. This is just <laughs> I don't know why this just one day I started talking about something and I used a golf ball as an analogy. And next thing I know, I'm everything's golf. But anyway. Um, so I have this golf ball on my desk because I'm trying to remember like when we have, let's say we have a client with 10,000 people on their list. Each one of those people is an individual person. They have real pain and real frustration and real past experiences, and they have real goals and dreams and aspirations. And so if we really want to go out there with our message and make it the message that they can't wait to engage with, then we need to make sure that we're talking to them, each person mm -hmm. right where they're at. And that golf ball you know, it's not like there's 10,000 of them all lined up right next to the hole. You wouldn't go out to the golf course without your bag of clubs and just grab your putter and be like, this is all I need, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't need any of that other stuff because some of those balls are not near the hole, at a, at even close. Like some of them are in the trees or the sand traps or maybe they've been swallowed by a duck or something. I don't know, but they're everywhere. So just picture your 10,000 golf balls all over the course and now you're coming up and going, which club should I use? Mm -hmm. Well, that's mm -hmm. a different answer depending on what ball we're after, right? And that's, so that's a great third, analogy. Do you play golf? <laughs> I do, but it's, I still think it's just great. Like, you know, we forget that. Like, yeah. not everybody's the same age or, you know, the same yeah. uh, number of years in, in, in practice. Like, place. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah. It's message, the right message to the right person at the right time, at the right phase of awareness and under the right conditions. Right. And that's and where so, like in high level too, like being able to use custom fields and values is huge, mm -hmm. especially for that. Because yeah, if you are sending to even 15 people that was from that were you met at a networking group, you can still have custom fields and values off of that one per each person to yeah. customize that even further. Yeah. And that's even more helpful. High level is amazing. Yeah. I have, I have people approach me. Like we talk with people who use all different tools. I have clients that use all different tools. Right. But when it comes down to it, like there's just things that high level can do that the other tools can't yeah. just is what it is. Right. Are there, are there nuances to high level that could be made different or better or like, are there little things we'd love for them to add in? Absolutely. With any tool. Right. But the reason no, I keep high level <laughs> is because I have the most possible opportunity for success with that tool because of the things that I can make that tool do. I can basically like make it get on its knees and cry for mama, which I love. <laughs> okay. And so um, the tags, the, um, the, the workflows, my God, I mean, yeah. I know there's a lot of people that are sending emails as email campaigns, like they're built, they're using the template builder and they're, you know, dragging over their little two column row and they're putting in all their stuff and making their emails look pretty and everything. And there's a time and a place for that, for sure. Um, I would say that's the exception and not the norm. Like right. for me personally, if I'm going to send a templatized email, whoops, that's going to be the exception, not the norm. Yeah. Um, because I want to talk to people right where they're at, which means I need to talk to them as though I'm talking to them. It's not a one to many conversation. Mm -hmm. It's a one to one conversation. Right. Like if I'm doing a Facebook video, I'm not going to be like, hey, guys, this or all of you, blah, 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 because there's one person on the other side of that video. What's they're not sitting in a room. To my channel. Yeah, they're not sitting in a room with a bunch of other people reading the same email. Like it's just them reading the email by themselves. So like I try to talk right. to people right where they're at and it's I want to make it more of a personal conversation. Um, and what's even more fun is when you do that through workflows instead of email campaigns for I mean, you can still bring a templatized email into a workflow. That's awesome. But when you do it through a workflow instead of an email campaign, you just exploded the opportunity to get message to audience match, yeah. not just now, but in the future. Yeah. Right. Because of all the extra things that you can do in workflows that you just can't do with a simple email campaign, email campaign. Yeah. I got stats. Right. right. Can I ask, can I ask a quick question? Ladies? Sure. Um, oh, yeah. um, one thing that I find challenging. So I, I sell to, uh, I'm a chiropractor. I sell to other chiropractors. And one thing that I find difficult in email is explaining the need to add like a a dedicated mail domain right mm -hmm. like Why? technically i understand that's a best practice 
But when you're trying to tell somebody that has been emailing from their Gmail account or it's, you know, uh, Dr. Kristen at whatever, you know, jacksonvillehealth.com right. um, yeah. that we're going to switch them. Can you guys help me with some language or analogies or something to tell them, hey, we should do this because, because I don't want it to come off of you need to understand the technology to do this better and you're going to screw everything else up which I, I know I've made my pay, my clients feel that way yeah. because I've overwhelmed them. And then they yeah. feel stupid. What, and it's yeah. Like, and that it's a big barrier now to do email because they're like, oh, what's that other stuff I'm supposed to remember? Ah, oh, forget it. I'll just send it from my personal account. Right. Yeah. Like, ugh. You know, so can you guys maybe help walk me through how you would explain it or what you think kind of takes the pressure off people? Yeah. Are we just talking about using a, you know, name at gmail.com address inside of high level to send? Or are you talking about, I'm just going to send it from my Gmail? Well, um, it's a great question. And <laughs> um, I don't know if it's necessary the sending, but I'm, it might be, I might be thinking specifically the reply to email. Because that's a different action. Correctly, it's like they always use their Gmail, kind of like what I was saying before with the bouncer, yeah. where yeah. they still want to use their Gmail for everything. And, and come in and manage whatever. replies. So we're like, hey, we have this great thing. It'll, it'll be amazing. Once we get it set up, it's kind of a hassle to set up, but we got to do it. How's the, what's the best way to explain that to the client to make them yeah. realize that it's a, actually benefiting them? Um, and one way that I know that we do it for our white label with cultivating sales <laughs> is I have, um, and my plan is to break this down in the academy as well at some point into some sort of templatized resource, but ha I have a form that's like, I ask for their information, but it starts with a video. They go to a page with a video of me explaining exactly why, and I'll even throw it in here. Uh, I gotta remember if it's help dot or www dot. <laughs> oh, she's doing that too. Exactly. I think a lot of it has to come up. It's your confidence also, you know, cause when we were first starting and working with yeah. Kristen and she said, you're mm -hmm. going to have to, you know, do this. And I'm like, oh, I gotta tell <laughs> everybody we're going to have to. Yeah. And yeah. my confidence grew now we really don't run into any problems. Yeah. After. Josh, but, honestly, but, I mean, just to answer those questions quickly while Stephanie's kind of gathering her stuff. Yeah, I threw um, it in the chat. It's just, awesome. uh, that's the page we send them to that will kind of, there's a little yeah. video of me explaining why it matters. And yeah. So if they're going to come in and use my high level account or one of my clients yeah. has somebody that's trying to come in and use their high level account and they're going to send from a free email address, the answer is just no. It's just plain old no. Like it's not even an option. If you want to have an account in here and you want to run any email out of it, you must have a branded email address, period. That's not even an option. And because the reason that's not an option is because A, I know it's not going to get them the, the results. And whose fault is that now? It's my yeah. tool. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. tool's the problem, right? So, oh, ever since we moved over to blah, 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 you know, this is happening. Um, the second thing is if they're on a shared subdomain, of ours or our clients, then them using a free non-branded email address as they're from actually could get our subdomain blacklisted. Right. Right. And that has happened. And and when you when you see that, they'll tell you the reason is mm -hmm. you know, that's the biggest one that gets clients that I've explained that to is like, hey, if we're all on one and you're using that if you get blacklisted and someone else gets blacklisted, then you're, you're being affected. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you would have pain because of other people, not you causing it for other one, other mm -hmm. people, but it's always, how's it going to make them feel if somebody mm -hmm. else gets them blacklisted? Yeah. And so free email happen. address as a from is just not even an option inside of high level, mm -hmm. like period for, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and when mm -hmm. we find that happening, we find it and we address it and we let them know that they need to correct it. And then we walk them through like, you know, how to honestly, how to grow up as a business, right? Cause it's time to put on your big boy pants now and actually have a real branded email address. You probably have a website. You definitely have a name, 
for your business, but you're showing up like you're the dude that's operating in his van down by the river, you know, to quote the Saturday Night Live skit. But basically, like, that's how you come across. We had a um, an exterior interior painter. Um, he's actually still a client. He's been a client of mine for about four years now. And when we first started working with him on his email, of course, he had a like XYZ painting at gmail.com, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, we need to have this discussion because when somebody goes out into your small community and they do painter near me, right? Mm -hmm. They are going to probably pull up, I don't know, five, six different tabs maybe. And mm -hmm. so now that you and like four or five other people are up there and they're trying to decide who's the guy that I should be getting a quote from or filling out a contact us form from, right? Mm -hmm. Then they fill out a couple of contact us forms or something. I want a free estimate. And then the email starts coming in. And now you're mm -hmm. the dude with the Gmail address and the other guys like at, you know, sure. bestpainter.com, right? Like, mm -hmm. how does that make you look? Yeah. And so there are, there are definite business reasons to do that for sure. And that's what we're trying to do with our clients is we're trying to, we want to go above and beyond. This isn't just about, um, you know, what we're going to allow in our tool or what's going to get them the best results from an open mm -hmm. rate standpoint or something like that. It's well, also, uh, you know, I want you to get results as a business owner because mm -hmm. presumably you started that business because you have yeah. a solution to someone else's pain or you right. have a solution to to the the goal or the dream that they're they're aspiring to attain right yeah you didn't start the business to just make a bunch of money you started it because you know how to solve a problem yeah. so let's make sure we get you in front of people i guess i didn't i didn't do a good job of clarifying what i was asking Is it a different question <laughs> <laughs> well no hopefully that helps somebody <laughs> I, yeah yeah i think kristen like what what happens is i don't even know that question to ask because i'm not as skilled as you so you're uh, <laughs> you know like it takes some skill to ask the right question in, in a lot of things i guess first off is why do we what what's good language to say this is why we set up you know let's say it's jacksonville health and we set up um you know i'm just going to use stephanie at mail.jacksonvillehealth.com like why set up a subdomain okay so that you just named a from address and i wouldn't do a subdomain in my from address for sure i would still do stephanie okay. at jacksonvillehealth.com as my from address but i think what okay. you're saying is on on the mailgun side you set up like mail.jacksonvillehealth.com as the subdomain okay right am i am i missing yep. something no that's, okay that's uh yeah we've done something similar why would yet. we yeah why would we do that so if i send you email right now it's going to come from kristen at email to inbox.com that's my from address kristen email to inbox.com okay. on okay. the back end one of my subdomains is reply dot email to inbox.com so the reason i do that is because i want to protect my root domain from risk and if you look in your own email account and you look at the different companies that are sending you email, you know, um, QuickBooks or uh, Hewlett Packard or, uh, you know, uh, Stripe or whoever it is, right? PayPal. Um, if you go look at all of those, you're going to notice and you might not see. You're obviously company. a business. You're obviously a business owner. If those are the three companies that just came first to mind. <laughs> QuickBooks, Stripe. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> um, but you're you're going to you're going to notice that they're actually using subdomains on the back end. If you look at the back end, you would see that they're using yeah. subdomains. Right. And the reason they're doing that is because one, they're trying to parse out their email in different subdomains like certain subdomains are used for certain types of email, but two, because if they send it as like paypal.com on the back of everything and enough people bounce or complain, then all of a sudden paypal.com is ruined, right? Yeah. And for email like- On the from side or on the reply side? I guess on the back end. So let's back up a little bit because this is where I think this, this gets really confusing for people. There's three pieces to email. There's your from- address which actually is called a friendly from and technically it doesn't even have to be a real address to be able to send an email like you can go into high level you have a dog so this is going to make sense <laughs> you can go into high <laughs> level and you can send an email to me right now as josh at some stupid domain.com and it would it would get sent okay because your friendly from is not technically what's called the sender the sender is the back end. So in high level speak, that would be your mailgun subdomain. That would be like reply dot uh, Josh's awesome business.com. That'd be your subdomain, right? And so 
that subdomain is what's called the sending domain. And then there's an IP address, a server basically that pushes the emails all over the place, right? Those servers have IP addresses and those IP addresses are also part of the sender. So your backend sending domain and your uh, backend IP combined are what's called the sender. And just like our mamas taught us when we were younger, they said your reputation precedes you. And it's true. So the back end is actually, it's going to sound weird, but the back end is actually what sort of like arrives first, right? They're looking at who's the sender and that's not your from address. Does that make sense? The bouncer is looking at that domain. If your domain does not match the from <laughs> address to what you're actually connected to on that mail gun side, the bouncer is going to say, no, get out of here. But <laughs> Even if this is reply dot, it's using that same address, that same domain in the address. That is what matters. That's what yeah. the mail provider is looking at. So they can the still end. send as their root domain, even though you're technically using a subdomain. Yeah. And you'll see that with PayPal too. I just to keep using this as an example, you know, they're going to show up as something at paypal.com. They're going to show up as something at something.paypal.com for the most part. They're just on the back so end a, where the subdomains are set up. So let me just recap what I heard here. So I make sure that I'm clear. It's a best practice to send from a subdomain, which is the, the from in, in go high level is just a, a placeholder. You, you like, it's, it's it plays. not really. It mm -hmm. definitely plays, and I would not recommend sending an email with a fake from address. That's not a good idea because you're right. going to end up in spam, right? But you'll get sent, but you're probably going to end up in right. spam. Um, but the but it's sender like a DBA, like you got to have your yeah. actual registered name. Yeah, that you can do business sure. as Kristen's Ice Cream Shop, but it's, it's like, really oh, like yeah, whether you're analogy. Stephanie Marie Blair or just Stephanie Blair. Yeah, like sometimes so I liked his analogy of the DBA yeah. though, because like the back end is the sender. The subdomain and mailgun and the IP that's being used to send, that is the sender. And that is the thing that they're evaluating first. And if that reputation is not good, it doesn't really matter what else is happening. You're not going to be in a okay. good position. Okay? okay. And so, and the reason that we use the, um, the subdomains on the back end instead of just putting our root domains in mailgun, two reasons. One, if we have a legitimate like Gmail account and we want to use the root domain in mailgun, we can't because the MX records will clash. That's a technical answer, okay? But it's just, you, if you're using it for real email, you can't also use it as a root and mail gun. Um, but the, the real reason we do subdomains and mail gun is because we're trying to protect our root domain from damage. When we send marketing emails, things can happen, right? You might have a higher bounce rate than you, than you should. You might have a higher complaint rate than you should. You might not be getting the best engagement um, that, that, you know, hopefully is going to keep your domain a nice high reputation. And so we use mm -hmm. subdomains on the back end because we know those are risks that we're trying to mitigate. And it's like a parent child relationship. So like the, the root domain is the parent email to inbox.com is the parent. And then the reply dot email to inbox, the replies dot email to inbox.com. Those are like the child's right children. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so if I ruin one of those subdomains, it's, it's hard to ruin a root domain if I ruin a subdomain. Like a subdomain being ruined doesn't necessarily mean the root domain is ruined. So I'm, I'm, it's a layer of protection. So if right? you had email.quickbooks.com um, and that something went wrong, right? And it gets a bad reputation. You could then start like uh, mail.quickbooks.com and you would still be okay. Yeah, exactly. And that's okay. why we use multiple subdomains, right? Um, I always start off with at least two for our clients and we warm up the first one and we get that kind of going and then we warm up the second one and, and we use one of them primarily and another one secondarily. And that way we don't have all our eggs in one basket. If one subdomain okay. has a bad day or goes south for some reason, then we've got another one that we can kind of divert to. Okay. Or we can separate traffic. Okay. Sometimes I'll separate traffic and I'll push out like the client that said, I want you to push out this thing to our whole list. You bet. I don't want to do that on the main domain. The, right. the email addresses are still the same, but I don't want to do it on the, the subdomain that I'm prizing. Roger that. Okay. Hey, I appreciate all the insight, Kristen. Hey, Josh. Um, my name is Maria. I've gone through the, um, 
academy with um, Stephanie and, and uh, so I've been using high level for a couple of years. I've also been a chiropractic assistant and office manager for several chiropractic clinics. Um, and I think probably the biggest pushback you may get is that they really only want to check one place right? They don't want to have to log in to um, their high level account. They just want that email, all the incoming email. They don't have time. They're seeing patients. They want point. somebody else yeah. to deal. It can be done. Those yeah. emails can be forwarded to that one place. And so it really does allow them to still manage, but it is a better practice for them. And um, I mean, I, I, I just dealt with a chiropractor that didn't even have Google my business set up and he had a wrong address listed. And he went from having people not be able to find him to, I take screenshots and remind him that I did this for him. Right. Um, he's now up to like 30,000 people have found him on Google wow. since I made that change for him. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Right. And, so, it's, and it's, Marie, it's, you're right. You can totally forward the, um, like the replies can be forwarded to like their regular email account if that's what they want. Um, for me personally, I don't do that. And I'm a nurse, so I'm well aware of what it's like. I've worked in doctor's offices. I've worked in hospitals. This is my main career. I've been a nurse for over 24 years, but um, which is going to sound funny, nursing email. I get it. It's <laughs> cool. uh, but what I will say is that um, this is marketing. And when, com when someone comes to me because they want uh, me to help them with marketing, this is not SaaS. Like when they come to me and they're like, I want you to help us with marketing. Well, then uh, the way they want to do it might be incongruent with best practice from my perspective. And that's a discussion that we have before there's ever a signature on a dotted line. Right. Because well, and are they coachable? In, like, I don't Do want to take that on and then have average results. And then that goes under my brand. Right. right? Yeah. So marketing email is different than day to day, like transactional email and the way that I work it with my clients. And maybe I'm just a stickler. Maybe I'm just a total pain in the rear for some of these clients. And that's fine. We're not a good Working. fit. But we, for me personally, I'm going to take somebody on who's willing to manage replies inside of high level or on the app. I am not going to take them on if they force me to push it all over to their email account. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because I know that I lose the tracking and triggering that's necessary and all of the lead scoring that I do off of email engagement. I lose all of that mm -hmm. if I start pushing stuff outside of high level. They're not paying me to get them average results. So that's, that's how I run my business. Mm -hmm. It is possible to send it out that way. And I will say there's one caveat to that because I have worked with um, like financial advisors. There are regulatory requirements that are in place for certain uh, niches that, that say they have to maintain X number of years of email communication by, by regulatory requirements. So obviously we're going to forward um, and BCC, frankly, we're going to do all of that stuff. And that's all going to go to an account, but not their main email account. We're going to just create a, a separate email account and push all that stuff into it. Because the last thing I want them doing is going into their Gmail account and replying back to somebody that was part yeah. of a marketing, uh, yeah. our marketing. And Josh, I threw my 15 minute calendar in there and I can walk through like what I have set up for our process with our white label clients and what I have them do and what we do and like the workflows and the technical side that I have set up for that. Okay. Um, I'd appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Thanks. Thank you guys. I didn't mean to grab yeah, all the, all yeah. the time here, but I really, no, you're good. These, the are yeah. These are great questions. These are, are there other questions? Of showing up, Josh, when you show um, up, you get to ask your questions. <laughs> I didn't see any in the Facebook group. Um, but I will say that for any other questions, I mean, I'm always sending people to you, but if you guys, <laughs> If anybody watching does have more questions or after the fact, when this is, event is over, if questions come up, go to Kristen, sign up for her email to inbox program. It's amazing. It's so, so, so worth it. Um, I missed that. What, I'm yeah. sorry. What does Kristen do? Like, she's obviously <laughs> an expert, but like, what's the program? I'm sorry if that's like a ridiculous no, that's question. Okay. I just, give no, yeah. it's a great question. Yeah. I mean, I, I help you turn your emails into dollar signs. That's the short version of it. And we have we have different ways that we work with people. So I probably don't have time to go into all of that. But what I would just say is there's a couple of things. So first of all, we have a, um, a free help doc library that we've started because um, I'm a Mailgun partner. I'm the only um, non-reseller partner that they have that I'm aware of at this point. So uh, they created the program and basically came, they, they came to me and they said, we'd like to create something between us. So what should that look like? And so that's what we did anyway. Um, 
So I know Mailgun like the back of my hand. And if anyone has any questions related to Mailgun, like I, that's easy stuff for me. I can help you with that. I write some um, help documents for high level uh, along the lines of email. So it, some people may have seen some of those documents, but one of the things that I get back from people a lot is it's hard to find information on this stuff. I have to go here and there and everywhere. I'm Google searching, I'm watching YouTubes, I'm asking people stuff in Facebook groups, I'm talking to marketing friends. And I've been there, I know what that's like. And so um, what our team has recently decided to do is to create a free help document library so the help documents that I write for high level, the help documents that we write for clients and stuff, like we're just starting to put all of those in there. And um, I can throw the link in the chat for you or I can give it to you later and you can put it on the- I put your Facebook page one in there for now. Oh, there, the... there may be a better link. Okay, go dot, uh, I'll put it in here later because okay. I know that we're running short on time, but um, I do have that help document library and there's no, there's no charge for that, it's just a, just create a profile and then you can go in and see. And I think there's maybe only like eight or 10 documents in there right now, but believe me, there's a ton more coming. And that's greater this idea. And we thought, well, let's make this easy for people. Um, and then I have the copy grader software. So Josh, you're, when you're asking me, what do I do a lot? There's a lot of things that we do, <laughs> right? So I have um, emailrx.app is our software. Um, I would say it's still kind of in beta right now, but it's a, it's a good beta. Like it's a, we're about ready to um, unleash a whole bunch of other stuff. And I just actually heard back from Mailgon on, on something that I was asking them about yesterday. So I'm really excited that there's more coming. I can't talk about it right now, Stephanie, so don't say anything. But emailrx.app is an option. Um, there is a monthly fee for that, but it's a copy grader. You put in your subject line, your copy, and um, it'll give you some insight into some things that you might wanna consider doing differently. Um, before you hit the send button. So it's not an email testing solution. It's not an email um, you know, delivery solution. It's just, let's look at the copy and stuff. And there's no chat GPT stuff in there right now. We're gonna add some in there because there are, there are um, in the box that shows you the results, there's uh, highlighted text and stuff. And so we're gonna add in something that helps you kind of like reword some things if you want to. Um, I wish there was like a communication method where you could drip out messages about all these different things that you do over like a, yeah. like a little bit of time, you know, maybe a couple of weeks or something. And I could read when I well, wanted to. Email list, Josh. <laughs> oh, oh, you have an email list? <laughs> what is email? I don't even understand. I'm not here to sell anything, you guys. I literally like a day and a half. I am. I want to sell you. Station in Messenger. <laughs> it, was late. it was like 10 o'clock at night or something. Yeah. He's like, hey, you be on Q&A. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so well, I like, think just reach out. Our, we're on your affiliate program, but we never use the link. We just like, just talk yeah. to Kristen. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. And yeah. there are, there are people that claim to be email experts that aren't. So you truly are. And you that's take why the Iron Throne. Are. Thank you. I appreciate that. I there's experts in every industry that are not. And so that's just yep. what I'm going to say about that. Um, yep. And there's a lot of people out there that know a lot of stuff. Right. And I and I think where I um, where I sort of wanted to take my company to be different is that I don't want to be the person that just helps you fix your technical stuff. Right. Uh, can we do it? Will we do it? Absolutely. I do a lot of that stuff for free on calls all the time. I'm on calls every day of every week and people will come to calls and they'll ask me technical questions and I help them fix things because frankly, that is not deliverability, right? That is just some technical stuff. You can hire somebody off of Fiverr. You can pay two or 300 bucks to somebody in a Facebook group to help you with it. They might even give you a few best practices on the way out the door, right? Um, what we do is we work with our clients on a, on a full solution because we don't wanna just get your emails to the inbox and help you get things set up correctly. Uh, that's not the win for us. We want to make sure that it's turning into dollar signs and they're actually serving the people that you're intending to serve because we use email as the vehicle to figure out message to audience match. And then what I tell our clients is once you figure that out with email, why would you only do that in email? That's why you, that's where the connection between nurse and email is, is because you're nurse, you're it's holistic, you keep nurture, but you're nursing the domain. You're nursing yeah she's she's like me i mean yeah. we're, we're problem solvers whether it's <laughs> in the hospital on the ambulance wherever right it's troubleshooting and problem solving it just yeah. happens to yeah. be that email 
is where you also have an emails my nervousness. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, a lot of people when they're starting out with their business or they're starting out in the marketing world, what do they do? They're like, oh, I'm going to run some Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get you some leads. Well, then you're in the bucket of every other lead monkey that's out there. You and everybody that's taken a whatever course, right? Like you're doing all of that stuff. And I'm not saying that's bad. People need leads. But the majority of business owners out there, some don't, but the majority of them have an email list. Mm -hmm. And so we're completely overlooking like the most, the, the most plentiful asset, the most plentiful resource on the planet in the marketing world is an email address. And so I don't want to spend money going and getting new leads. That's just a ridiculous concept to me. I would rather figure all of this out with email, take what I've learned and then put money behind it. That makes sense mm -hmm. to me. So once we figure out message to audience match and email, the fourth step of our program is really what I would just call scale. And I don't mean send more emails. I mean, let's take what we've learned and start branching it out to all the way back to the beginning of your ecosystem where people are first opting in. W what does that opt-in form look like? What's the psychology of the questions that you're asking on there? Um, what are the types of questions that you're asking on there? Are they free text? Are they discreet? Like all of that stuff starts to come into play. And then we work our way through that, the booking form, the sales call documentation, like all of the stuff that's happening all the way through the sales calls. Because if we're doing a marketing journey that gets incongruent the minute it switches over to a sales conversation, that's not good. And then if we are congruent all the way through sales, but we're not congruent on the fulfillment side, which leads into referral territory, also not good. So yes, I'm an email nerd. Like I probably have a tattoo on my forehead at this point, but. Oh, and that's why no one can beat you because yeah. wow, <laughs> everything you just said like, <laughs> is, is so it true. matters, but not everybody can wrap their heads around it you know and, and, and for some for some clients they really have to actually collect the email mm -hmm. and some offices Cairo's naturopaths like on their intake form which is still on paper they don't even have a space for what is your email yeah and so we really need to get them <laughs> to think of their practice as a business so oh, yeah. that they can turn the emails into dollars well, and, you know, to your point, Marie, the thing that I like to help people understand is that they don't have a business without a list. Mm -hmm. The list is the business. If the business closed down for some reason, brick and mortar, you know, went up in flames, you ended up in a divorce and had to close it down, whatever. There's reasons why businesses go out of practice, right? Um, the next day, can you start it over? The answer to that question is going to lie in whether you have a list. Right. Yeah. So. And that's a great point to end on i would say yeah <laughs> um so again check out Kristen and the email the inbox program the academy for high level as well if you want to hear more of my voice and training and more of the how-to technical in high level so those subject lines and things like that um yeah. and come back next friday for and let me just say stephanie like i don't want you to poo poo like i don't want you to minimize your academy in the context of what we're doing here oh. i I don't, I don't, I mean, our people, my right. team is going through your academy. Right. I don't have the time or the inclination, frankly, to yeah. help people I don't go through it. <laughs> like understand all of this stuff. And so, um, yes, we bought, we actually paid for the academy what? because I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, we had that as part of our arsenal as well. Yeah. Um, of and it's updating every day. Yeah. It's, it's looking really good. I'm really, really impressed. So, so um, I'll get you the links that we promised. I'll get you the link to the free um, help document library. I'll get you the link to um, email RX just so you can have that. And um, if somebody is interested in talking with me, like just my calendar is open. High level has my calendar link. It's at the bottom of oh, my yeah. and um, Sean's notorious for, I don't know. Talk to Kristen. <laughs> 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 yeah, that happened a few years ago. Um, so, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm an open book. Like, honestly, I'm just here to help people. I'm not a salesperson. I don't uh, know a lick about sales, but I can definitely help you. I'm 100% confident in that. So if you have questions, just let me know. I'm happy to, happy to hop you, on a call. Kristen, and thank you, everybody, for jumping yeah, on. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Want to learn Go High Level in a structured format? Check out the GHLAcademy.com by Extendly. We guarantee to save you six months of wasted subscription costs for high level. Just visit the GHLAcademy.com.